Are you an INFP who is shy and awkward? I've been there. I've been there. Ooh. And I will tell you in this video about how I got past it, how I became more comfortable with myself and conversations and just people in general. What's up, Legend? It's Sherman here from Geek Psychology, where I help geeks, gamers, and creatives like yourself understand and leverage your personality type for personal growth. So I remember when I... Man, I was so awkward. I'm, I'm still... I'm just going to keep making this noise a little bit, make it really weird. I, you know, I still got my, my issues. I'm not like the most outgoing and charismatic person. But when I was in uh, high school, there was a girl I liked that I was kind of obsessed about. And uh, she, uh, there, was, there was an electronic music concert that I wanted to go to, and um, I decided to call her to go. And she didn't answer the phone. This was in, this was in like 2002, 2001, 2002, yeah. So a uh, long time ago, back before all the cell phones and whatnot, I think I had a brick phone at some point, but anyway. Um, so I, I called her, no answer, hung up. A minute later, called her. No answer. A minute later, just I called, I swear, like probably 40 times. Um, I really hope, still to this day, I, I hope that she didn't have caller ID or anything like that to show, like, you've missed 43 calls from Matt Sherman. That would be really, really awkward. And in order to to kind of get past this this issue of not knowing how to communicate with people and not feeling fulfilled with a lot of the, the conversations and things like that. I went on the path of studying seduction. I studied how to build rapport and how to communicate with people. And different, you know, this was the start of me studying personality type, essentially. It was like learning how do I communicate to certain people? And how do I express the things that I want? And how do I get the things that I want into my life that comes through communicating and having relationships and, you know, building these the foundations of relationships with other people uh, because I, I knew that I had a pretty glaring uh, awkward weakness you know and I, I didn't know how to communicate to people I was always shy and, and uncomfortable um, I didn't want to be in the spotlight I wanted you know my own little desk over here uh, even when like the cute girl asked me do I always hold my pen I was holding my pen like this like between my fingers because so I was just, I don't know, I was experimenting with different ways of writing. She's like, do you always hold your pen like that? I was like, uh, yes, always. Mm. <laughs> like just so, so bizarre, so awkward. And that was okay, because it was part of the journey. You know, and that's it was part of all the steps and the process to learning how to become um, somebody who is more comfortable with light conversation, with deep conversation, with talking to people, uh, with creating connections and things like that. Uh, with people that you don't even know. In the end, after all that, I... Well, actually, I'll, I'll save this for the end of the video. Okay, we'll, we'll wrap it up with that. Um, so let's get into the, the tools and, like, the techniques. How do, how do you, like, get through this? How do you get past this issue? Well, the first core lesson that helped me is that if you get rejected, they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting, like, that, that hologram, holographic... Uh, version of yourself that you put out there it's not you specifically they don't know all of you you cannot communicate all of yourself instantly in the the three seconds or whatever it takes for somebody to make uh, a first impression judgment of you and as an INFP I know that like we we have so many different aspects and facets of ourselves that we know that we want to communicate with the other person and it's it's just not possible Right? Metaphor goes a long way through communicating that stuff, a picture or something like that, you know, that, that you drew in an art piece or something. But you can't instantly go to that level and say, hey, I drew this for you. This is, this is me. What do you think? Do you like me? Like, that doesn't, it doesn't work like that, right? So you need to pick the, the one aspect of yourself that you want to portray first, right? What is the, the thing that you want to highlight about yourself? It's like marketing, right? And it feels weird. It feels slimy. Sometimes it feels just awkward because you're like, no, I want to show all of who I am. And I don't want to pretend that I'm this other person or, or something like that. But it's not. It's about showing and highlighting 
the specific things that you want to bring into the situation. Like the way that you talk to your friend is not the same way you talk to your parents, your family, your teacher, uh, your coworkers, or anything like that. And even within that, there are smaller subsets. So I said pick one, but really pick a couple. Pick a couple things about yourself that you just want to highlight, that you want to show, that you are extremely passionate about, and go from there when you start a new conversation. Because you don't want somebody in your life that isn't interested in those things that are really important to you anyway. Also, the next one is to really embrace and trust your innovating explorer, that extroverted intuition aspect of yourself that's pushing you to go out there and change things and shake things up and push buttons and throw rocks at beehives and all those things, right? That just is curious about all the possibilities. Really lean into that and because it's a strength for us. You know, go and have your, your idea of how you want the conversation to go or what you want it to have, what you want to have happen. Um, you can be idealistic, you know, sometimes we, we get a little bit too idealistic. Trust that your unconscious mind is going to connect all these patterns, that you're going to be able to see how things are happening, that you're going to be able to take this emergent word or, or bit of conversation and tie it to something else that is important. And you're going to, through doing that, you're going to weave the conversation into the direction that you want. And of course, you know, you need to be um, concerned and conscious and you know aware of what the other person wants in a conversation because you don't want to just hog it all yourself but you can control some of that and make it more interesting for you as well and when it becomes more interesting to you then you're going to naturally light up you're going to feel more motivated and inspired and uh, more expressive perhaps and you're going to be more engaged in the conversation instead of worrying about uh, who you are and what you're doing and what you're communicating and all that stuff, right? You're going to be in uptime, as they say in your linguistic programming, which is, you know, you're reacting and engaging with the things that are happening in the moment and you're not stuck in there. So just like plant the seeds. This is where I want the conversation to go. And then trust your intuition from there. Also embrace the suck, as they say in the military, um, or in gaming terms, Powered by the Apocalypse has a fail-forward mechanic. So this is, you know, there's, there's very little in life that is a complete failure. Right? You can take from it lessons, and you can implement those lessons to change your life and to make your life better. A lot of the times, though, there are going to be things that you're just like, oh, that didn't work out too well. That was bad. Like I said about my, my uh, calling issue, um, as well as, you know, I remember one time I put perfume on my my wrist it was cologne i guess it wasn't perfume uh that would have been even more awkward and i walked up to a random girl in the hallway this is in university and i was like hey which one smells better that's weird that is weird and she didn't even speak english that was weird all right and that's okay it was a learning experience because from that i learned that like you know you need to you need to create a little bit of uh, intrigue or you know soften up the the whole situation before you just run in there asking people to do stuff because that's weird i didn't latch on to that as like my identity because as i said before none of this is is it's not fully representative of who you are it's one aspect right one experience one situation one thing and i know as an infp we tend to bring that out uh very heavily we're like well this is something i did so now i know that i'm i'm capable of doing this weird thing or having this strange thought and i'm going to always have that within me yeah yeah but it doesn't need to represent your whole life and if it is something that you're struggling with go to inowfeelpositive.com sign up for the newsletter buy the program and fix your life because we go into things like timeline work and and removing and clearing um, bad experiences and fixing your mindset and understanding your values and taking appropriate actions to get the goals that you want accomplished. So just know that what you do is just a, a splinter in time and that's what it is. Like it, it's not everything. Those struggles, the, the suck, the bad experiences, you're going to learn through them if you intentionally do it. And that brings us to the question what did I learn and how do I do it better next time? It's all about implementation, taking those experiences, taking the awkward times, taking the good and the bad and, and 
bundling that up into a better future experience using hindsight you know using proper foresight and and taking actions that are going to put you in a better situation to live a better life and so being shy and being awkward i feel is this this combination of i want to express all these things i want to do all this stuff i want to show you who i am deep down deep down in the core of my being so that if you resonate with that if you relate with that then we can be soulmates forever and yeah yeah there's part of that but it is a process and within that process there are good and bad things and you just it's about taking those lessons and working towards what you want shaving off the things that you don't like you know expanding on the things that you do like and incorporating those aspects of yourself that you want to talk about that you want in your life and that you want to attract people who have similar interests in that you know or you can attract your opposite and that works too it's just all about that like process of of learning and pushing forwards and that brings us back to the story that i started telling about at the beginning which is you know after all that learning about myself and and you know thinking of pickup lines and and can lines how do i how do i communicate all these things and how should i stand and uh you know what what are all the body language and and gestures and things like that in the end it was all just a a self-confidence building procedure it was i needed to feel better about myself and learn how to um, see myself as someone who is worthy of conversation and who is interesting and compelling and and has something to offer in the world you know that that i have some value and you do you have that it's there you just got to put yourself out there continuously and it might feel like it sucks it might feel like you'll never get past it or or it's just this horrible horrible thing but the next day nobody's going to remember like if you make some awkward thing you know if you do something that's strange if you do a, a social taboo or faux pas oh no you know the world is not going to end for you um it's we're not back in the the days of the archaic past when you know a social mistake in a group of 20 people is like your whole entire life you know we're we're not in that situation anymore you can go somewhere else you can do something else but it does require practice a surgeon a heart surgeon you know they have to study they have to study to become a heart surgeon they have to hopefully not fail but they have to learn through the process what is important what's what's not how do i do this what are all the the core mechanics and everything like that they don't just like show up and like oh, here we go it's time to do heart surgery it just you know and and they know that it's a procedure like it's a learning experience anything that you've done takes time and energy and practice. If it's art, well, you had to learn how to draw a circle first and a line first and then a circle and you know combine all these different shapes to make the thing that you want. If it's music, you learned how to just, you know, just do one chord, you know? Language came through just a word at a time, taking your first steps, going to the gym. You don't just lift once and be like, well, here we go, I'm good for the rest of my life. It's a process. You know, so don't put too much weight on your current situation and what that one experience is and the the one girl of your life or the guy of your dreams or whatever it is it's a process you know and through doing that you're going to gain more experience and you're going to be able to put yourself in a position to attract the people that you want more of in your life check out this video over here this is a good one about infps yeah you should check that one out go to inowfeelpositive.com and sign up for the the newsletter come into the discord server and have some nice conversations we do a monthly video chat as well with uh, anybody that shows up we got like 20 some members uh, on video last time which is a lot for just infps so come on join us stay a while and listen right, goodbye <laughs> See you.